Cool. Cool. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody who's watching. My name is Noda Costa, and I'm here with AU Dollars with the one, the only, Koji Radical. Hello, everybody. How are you? I'm good, man. Yeah. I'm good. I'm very good. I'm, 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 my body isn't matching, like, my heart is good. <laughs> my body, on the other hand. That sounds medical. <laughs> hey, man, well, it's been a crazy few days, you know, yeah. um, um, for yeah, the both of us, but especially you. I mean, obviously, flying all the way to Australia, mm. promised land, mm. no, well, no, Sydney, promised land, and, um, and then now yeah. Melbourne. Mm. Yeah, how's, how's the whole journey been so far? It's been good. Can't complain. Um, I can't complain. <laughs> I won't complain, but it's been good. Yeah. I think um, I think I enjoy. I, like, I enjoy Australia. It's it's literally. I always, every time I come here, my the, I always leave saying it's a shame that's so far away. Because <laughs> honestly, I think I yeah. think even culturally and just vibe wise, um, the cultures click and connect one hundred percent a lot. But the distance, you notice it when you get here. Yeah, do you know what I'm saying. Um, but there's always a lot of love when you get here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of love. No, for sure, for sure. It's a, it's a very special place, Australia. I feel mm. like, and that distance is rough, but I feel at the same time, it kind of offers a cool opportunity t for us to build something outside of that really strong influence in that way. Yeah. I always say that I feel like Australia now is kind of where the UK was kind of in the early 2000s in regard to really... What, everyone's making shit pop songs? <laughs> Well, not that part. Well, I, I mean, actually, no, let me, let, uh, let, me not, let me not slam. There are some, maybe. Okay. But it's more just like on the underground thing, the, that identity really being found. Yeah. In that sense. Yeah. Um, but what I really want to get into, man, is just, is just like, you know, uh, like what's, what's just the, what's your creative journey been like the last year? Because I kind of mentioned to you this off camera before, but it seems like, it seems like, well, the feature one's been crazy. Mm. Obviously, um, there's been a lot more Amapiano. piano. Mm. Uh, I've been seeing a lot, you know, obviously, more kind of hip hop R and B tracks, uh, truck uh, tracks as always. Mm. Um, what's kind of your headspace been recently? It feels very different to the headspace in the lead up to Reason to Smile, you know? Yeah, yeah. I was like, I was, I was sad and nervous and scared for my life, <laughs> and there was a lot of changes, and I didn't know who I was and what I was really gonna do. Mm. And that's where Reason to Smile came from. And then Reason to Smile comes out and does really well. And leaves me in this kind of like weird middle ground where um, uh, everyone's got like the attention span of like Dory. Mm. So like you drop one thing and like a week later everyone's like, when's the new music coming? Mm. And I go, guys, I haven't lived anything. You yeah, know? I haven't lived anything between the last album and and then. So, but I knew I knew I still had a passion to create. Yeah. So I was just actually saying shout me yeah <laughs> you know what i mean yeah like yeah. i'd bump into someone and say shout me yeah and they shouted me mm. a good 20 plus times now <laughs> yeah. and um and i did i did i did all the records i did more records there's more features knocking about more koji features knocking about and I, honestly i didn't even do it on some like this is going to be a run I just wanted to do hood rat shit with my friends. Right, I get you. Do you I get know you. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So, being in the studio and just being around and and knowing what the energy is and like being actually proud of my people, do you know mm. what I'm saying, um, was always an honor for me. And um, yeah, like some records have really done 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 big bits, and mm. I'm just grateful to be included or even be like wanted in that way. Right, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That actually, um, uh, it, that reminds me of, of, of an interview I saw with Little Sims on Zane Lowe. I'm not sure if you saw that one, but she was saying how, uh, in regards to how she kind of just creates, she's gotten to a point now where she's not worried about timelines and stuff like that. And I wonder with that kind of, you know, you wanting to kind of do hood rat shit with your friends, just, mm -hmm. just creating, making music. You've mentioned kind of bits and pieces you're working on your next projects. What's your mentality like in regards to, you know, pushing that project this, whenever this comes, because mm. obviously Reason to Smile, that was your big debut. Yeah, I know. Um, you know, you put, you, you, you put so much of yourself into it and it was very, and it was very, mm. I would say it was a very clean release, you know, very yeah. like, 
you know, kind of went, you know, it, it, it wasn't like, it wasn't, it wasn't a mixtape thing. It wasn't EP, no, you know? it, it was yeah. a few, I, four I, I think I ran out of lifelines. <laughs> mixtape. Yeah. I think if I said I was dropping another mixtape or EP, <laughs> I think I would have been hung, drawn and quartered. Right, right. So, um, I had to kind of buckle down and say, this is my album. Um, but I have no idea. I think I have no idea because I don't know what it sounds like. Mm. I think the sound of an album is definitely, um, is, is the main thing that goes into how you promote it and how you put it out. Um, and I, I'm always going to make sure it kind of sits and exists in its own world. Yeah. I think um, the, the hardest part is kind of knowing that everyone's doing this mm. and I'm forever going to be doing that. Yeah. And as much as I would love to do this, I have to do that. Yeah. Because there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of young people, or a lot of creatives in general that find themselves right in the middle mm. and, and feel like they might not fit into this and they might be too scared to do that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. I'm here to make that look easy. Yeah, right. I see you. I see you. I see you. And with you kind of saying you don't know what the album sounds like, doing another throwback, going into Reason to Smile, because I remember, I remember after Cashmere Tears dropped mm. and shortly after it dropped, you're like working on the next album yeah. and there was all that momentum and conversations, you know, we know you've had before about and then COVID came and stuff yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. But the sound of Reason to Smile, did that change with the change of the times? And then following from that question, um, how do you find the sound of an album? Now, I, think, I think with Reason to Smile, I didn't expect Cashmere Tears, the project, to hit. So when it did, it was like, oh, that was like, like we did Cashmere Tears quickly. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? So it was like, oh, okay, cool. Let's take this and make it 12 times more grand. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Let's have 11 pieces when it comes to the violins yeah. instead of four. Yeah. Let's, let's have eight horned instruments instead of two. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Let's... Let's get all real pianos. Let's have yeah. your favorite drummers come in and replay all these drum parts. Let's mm. just like do it, you yeah. know? Because um, at the end of the day, yeah, that's not, it don't come like, music, like, it's not given to you, you just hear it. Mm. You can only speak about the experience that you have after listening to something. And you know when something makes you feel good, when something makes you feel crap, do you know what I'm saying? Mm. Um, and my whole thing about it was like, it's, it's good food, not fast food. Yeah, I mean it's hard food. Yeah, it's it's food for the soul. It's not, it's not like a twenty four hour McDonald's drive through. Of course not. You know of course. Yeah, yeah. But there's there's nothing wrong with with some nuggets and Hennessy. <laughs> right, right. No, you're you're, you're correct. You're correct. Mm. Very very correct. I mean, actually, on that note though, like, um, kind of just talking about food. What's your opinion on Australian food? What's your experience being there? <laughs> I, I feel like I, I feel like I feel like this must be a violation. <laughs> Um, okay, hear me out. <laughs> okay, hear me out. I'm listening. It's cool. I don't get it, but it's cool. What, what, which parts are you not getting? Either it looks amazing, but tastes like nothing. <laughs> yeah. Like, as in, after I've got my picture, I could just not eat it. Right. Or it looks like horror but it tastes all right. Or it, it's just, it's advertised as one thing. You're right. And it's not that. <laughs> <You're right. Yeah. laughs> There's like, those are the only ways I could describe it. Um, like I've had, I've had so many crispy squid. That, that was like, oh, calamari? Calamari, I've been living on calamari. Speaking of calamari, I'll take calamari. But um, <laughs> I've been living on calamari. The fish is banging. Yeah. Fish can slide. Yeah. I actually went to a steak restaurant and ordered fish. So maybe I'm like, the problem. <laughs> I'm just in the wrong places for the wrong things. Fair enough, fair enough. Well, oh, I got some good, I got some good Ghanaian, West African re food. Yeah, I've been hearing about this. Where is it at? Literally not far from here. Not okay. far from here. Okay. There's like, there's like, there are two within like a, like a 10, 10 feet. So this where all the black people are? Yeah. Oh, with the one? Nah, they, but there's another one that is there. That's where the black people are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But Take we're here, we're here, we're here. <laughs> Take me there. Done, done, done. Please. <laughs> <laughs> it's happening, it's happening. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Um, actually, on that as well, like what's, what's um, coming in as, so, like what's your, what are kind of your views and your insights on what does like Australian culture, 
black Australian culture, music creative culture, whatever, you know, whatever phrase you want to take, what does that look like from your lens? It's interesting because I think there's this, there's so many elements to culture out here. It's like, for example, out here, there's a, there's a big focus on Islanders mm. and, and the kind of Aboriginal culture and all that stuff. And, mm. and, and there's a deep history there, a deep, very painful history. Mm. And, you can, and you can tell that when you speak to the right people. Mm. Um, and then outside of that, you've got children of diaspora that are here for whatever reason, whether it's migration or whatever, trying to acclimatize to living in a world that isn't necessarily designed for their blackness mm. or mm. Yeah. whatever they may be from. Yeah. Um, and just trying to find their feet there whilst also being quite disconnected from the source. So like we are far away from South Africa. We are mm. far away from this place and that place and et cetera, et cetera, mm. et cetera. So where, like, I don't know how to describe it, where there are like, for example, my lived in experience in the UK in London, there are community pockets. Mm. So I could go to, to Dorston and know, and walk through the market and see bare Nigerians, bare Caribbeans and, and, and man from India and Pakistan and all that stuff, just cracking on, doing mm. anything. Um, or I can go to like Northwest and see all the Somalis. Mm. They're all there, do you know what I'm saying? And I could go to, um, I can go to, no, where is it in North where all the, the, um, the Orthodox Jews are? Stoke Newton, and they're mm. all that like they're all there. They've got the hats, mm. the whole clothes, and they're there and they're in their pockets. And you know where to go for culture, and mm. and those people are going to be closely linked to the original source of their culture. So as you're talking to them and you're learning about things, you're going, ah, okay, cool. And then certain things starts to blend. Do you know mm. what I mean? So you'll hear you'll hear the Jamaican man using African slang. Yeah, you'll hear the African man using Jamaican slang and all yeah. that stuff, and like it all kind of becomes this one big melting pot. And I find that, like, here that's starting to happen, I think it, it's just, like, really identifying what makes it special here. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. Um, it's happening everywhere. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, for sure, for sure. And, 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 and it's a very astute observation. Like, it's... it's you know, being from the UK myself and then mm. living in America before we moved mm. here as well, mm. it's like kind of, it's interesting seeing how culture is forming mm. in, in a modern context as well, like outside of segregation and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, no, it's fascinating. I find it sick that like black shit's always going to be black shit wherever you go. <laughs> like yesterday we played Candy. Yeah, oh man. I took no instructions. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> man, shout out DJ Ela, man. That was that Eli was that time. was needed. Mm -hmm. That was needed. Oh my gosh, because I was in the bathroom and I heard that hey, come you on. Said, Yo, nah, that's exactly <laughs> that's literally what happened. That's <laughs> literally what happened, man. Yeah, Love man. That. that was that. That was special. That mm. was special. What are, what are some of the uh, the uh, commonalities you've seen between um, the culture here compared mm. to uh, you know, on, on that note? Similarities. Um, um, your drivers hate cyclists. Oh yeah. Just as much as we do. That's mandatory. Cuss them out, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Roll the window down and really let them have it. <laughs> and you guys use, like, like plonk. Like, you use that plonk. word plonk. You plonk. Oh, do you mean gronk? Yeah, or something, yeah. Gronk, gronk, that's gronk the one. That's an oh, insult. Yeah. yeah, I love that one. Jesus. <laughs> Sorry about that, it just feels offensive. It does, it does. <laughs> I don't know why. To this day, I don't, I've been here 11 years, I, I still don't know, know what, what it means. means. I still don't know what it means, don't but it goes me hard. Though. Just because yeah. I'm riding a bike. <laughs> um... What else is going on that's similar? Um, ooh, uh, gentrification. No, oh, unfortunately. <laughs> that's going in. Mm. <laughs> um, what else is popping that's similar? Um, bank holidays. Yeah. You guys will milk that. Oh. Will, will you milk it too? Yeah, like, nah, it's, it's, it's <laughs> one, it. one thing that's nice about Australia is that anybody, like, any excuse to not work, people mm -hmm. will take. Yep. It's real chill. Um, I will take it too, mm. which is nice. For sure. What else? Um, the further, like, so the further you go from uh, whatever, like, a main city is or a capital, the accents become more and more impossible to understand. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. the same thing with, like, London. It's like the further you go, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. that way, it gets techie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it gets sure. techie. It gets techie. For sure. For but, sure. Um, but, yeah, there's loads. There's loads. I think, um, I think youth culture definitely shares a lot of similarities. 
just in like that hustler spirit. Mm. I think everyone everyone's trying to make it doing something, mm. and and that causes and forces communities to kind of start to build yeah. and emerge from nothing. Essentially. Yeah, yeah. It's it's fascinating to to even see that you've been able to kind of gather so much because I feel like being on the road like you only get to ever like scrape a, a light crust off. Mm -hmm. um, but it seems you've been able to kind of really actually Do you know what is? get in there. It's because I, like there's this part where mm. I'm like here doing shows, doing interviews, sick, cool. But people will tell you, I will just appear in your country by myself. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And just do regular shit all the time. Mm. I do it all the time, do it in loads of different places. Um, and I would, and I would 100, I kind of did it back in the day. I did it about six years ago with Australia. I came back to Melbourne just yeah. on a quiet one and was just here chilling. I think I was in South Yarra. Oh, yeah, yeah, not too far from here. Yeah, I was over that side. Um, just calling. Yeah. Like, did it in South Africa a few times. Yeah. Um, again, just to, just to get that. There's, people are going to treat you different. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, when I come over and it's like, Koji's in town, there's a different treatment. Does Whereas, that, like, if mm. I just come over and people are like, are you... It don't matter at that point. Yeah. I'm, I'm wondering, and this is probably something that maybe you would have heard before, but I'm just always curious to know it directly. Does that ever get like annoying? Because I remember like at Promised Land, like, mm. and even even last night to a degree, like, mm. um, you know, going and seeing, at one point Davido comes in, everyone gets off the dance floor, starts filming. Mm. Thames comes down, understandable, because she's Thames, she's incredible. But then it's like all the phones suddenly go. Mm. And there was a moment where even she looked a bit like, okay, can we chill? Yeah, the camera's on my face. Uh, and it's just like, <laughs> it's just like, you know, as, as, you know as, a, as a musician, as a celebrity yourself, like what, mm. what's, What's that like? Because I feel you move very naturally throughout the world, but obviously as you keep going on, that's the freedom for that gets smaller and smaller. How do yeah. you actually navigate that? I always tell people I'm not even really that. I'm not medium level famous. <laughs> I've heard I'm you like, say that before. Yeah, like major medium level. Like I could, I could happily be in the club talking to a girl, thinking, "Wow, this girl really likes me," and then I clock, she thinks she's talking to Burner Boy for that. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's like it's not always going my way. <laughs> In that, in terms of the fame thing, but I think at the same time, it all depends on approach. Mm. Uh, on the right day, I've got time for a thousand people to come up to me and take a picture. On the wrong day, leave me alone, mm. and that's okay. Mm. Do you know what I mean? There's yeah. there's times even just as a civilian, I've got my headphones on because I don't want to chat to you. Yeah. <laughs> do you know yeah, 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 yeah. Respect the headphones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't make me do this. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I'm yeah, at that point. There's yeah. days like that and there's like, there's days where like, actually, I might be second guessing myself and thinking nobody's fucking with my shit anyway. And then I walk into a spot and someone says, yo, I fuck with your music. Mm. I like this song, this song changed my life. And, mm. it, and you, the, the gentle reminders that you need to carry on going. So mm. it's always just time, space and, 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 and the moment itself. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Mm. Um, and that brings me to another thought as well. With... When it comes to, you know, just your career and all the growth and, and, and silence and the noise, you know, like last, last time we spoke, well, like back in the, you know, year ago, mm. you know, I was asking about how, how you kind of balanced it with also having a child and everything. And, you know, now you've got a family. Like, how do you actually get to that space where you um, are centered? Because like you say, it's like in this creative world, some days you're feeling like you're, you're the one, sometimes you feel like you're not it. Yeah. All that pressure, I imagine, intensifies when you've now got a family. And I mean, you've been looking after your dependent, you've been looking after people since before then, too. Like, how do you actually balance that? That's something that I see that you do, and I actually have no idea how that is done. I keep, I keep, I keep people around me that don't care. <laughs> don't give a fuck. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, my friends from like, back in the day, from like, college, yeah. still my same friends. Mm. They like work normal jobs, normal lives, they're happy for me. Don't get me wrong, if something crazy happens and it's like, yo, don't hit me up, like, yo, congrats. But like, I can't go and tell them, man, oh, I've been, I've been asked to host this award show and because they don't know what that award show is. <laughs> right, Do you know yeah, what I'm saying? yeah, like, yeah. Like, if I, if I buy a, a brand new pair of whatever the fuck's, like a pair of Montclair's, but my son wants to skateboard through the park on a rainy day, they don't care how much them shoes cost. Mm. We got a skate daddy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so like, yeah. there's so many little things where it's like, in the grand scheme of like all of this, there is an element of the world that don't give a fuck about you. you yeah. know what I'm saying? And, and, and you, 
the people that take it as an offence, like people, people will be chatting to me and they'll go, no offence, I've never heard of your music. Mm. Why is that offensive? Mm. <laughs> what? Mm. Like, why, why, why do you feel like I walk on this earth going, everybody knows who <laughs> I am? Like, that's fucking weird. Like, yeah. chill out. I'm very fortunate to be able to make music for a living, to be able to do this as my bread and butter, live, eat, cool, buy nice things, travel the world, do whatever. I know I'm in a fortunate position. That comes with zero ego. Yeah. Because if I lose it all, which I've seen people do, mm. I that would keep me up at night. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. There's people I've seen whose rise were so meteoric mm. and like, I'm like, whoa, this is going to be the biggest artist from the UK. And then they might wake up one day, check Shade Borough and they're caught in a scandal. Next thing you know, no one's trying to check for their music. No one's, no one's buying it. No one's going to the shows, nothing. Mm. And, and I remember those people. I remember meeting them and shaking a hand and feeling like my man feels he's famous. Mm. He, he thinks he's more famous than... He feels like mm. he thinks he's a better artist. He, I can feel it in one hand. Mm. And, then, and then it all come crashing. Yeah. I see the same man. Yo, my brother, yo, <laughs> yo. Right. <laughs> like, do you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, yeah, yeah. It gets all wild like that. So, you have to just remain humble, man. Very yeah. fortunate to do this job. Yeah, absolutely, man. It seems like a blessing. And yeah. it's, yeah, to be able to create and it's the dream. It's the dream. Um, coming into, like, the, the, last, the last few minutes, uh, well, I'll get some of the obvious ones out of the way. Obviously, loving the features. Keep them coming at your own pace. No, wow. I'm done. You're done? So, the I'm next done. one's a track? Is that, is that what we're saying? That's, that's what I was trying to get to. That's what I was trying to get to. <laughs> that's what I was trying to get to. I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you said that. Um, <laughs> um, honestly, at this point, like, when I say I was frugal with verses, I was frugal. Like, if, we, if we was cool and I'm like, yo, I'm coming through, I'm dropping a verse. Some people might have a more than one, but like for every one feature that somebody has of me out at the moment, they probably have two or three more verses sitting on there. Jeez. So like, if they decide to put that out between now and me making the next whatever, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna stop that. Yeah. If anything, I'm the and like the label love me. Mm. Hopefully, pick up Atlantic, keep <laughs> loving me, keep the budget <laughs> yep. in. Yep. But also like. I know I stress certain people at the office at <laughs> because like they might get a feature one day come through and yeah, cool, it's Shy FX and Noel Rogers. Mm. No brainer, okay, cool, we're gonna sign that off. Blah blah, we'll work out the splits and the money, blah 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 blah. Then I might just find one you from TikTok that's got like two thousand followers. I've I've always let me just say I've always appreciated that because yeah. like it's from you I discovered Lex Ammo, mm -hmm. I discovered Bao. Bao mm -hmm. was is he's, he's cold, oh yeah. my gosh. And now, and now look at them. Yeah. You know what I'm man. saying? Like, and, yeah. and they will all tell you I was fucking with them when it was just me and them. You can you, you can always see it. It's like a tweet. Saying? It's like a tweet and the next thing you know a few months later. Yeah, a few, I'm, yeah. I'm, yeah. So I'll I'll reach out to somebody that's just getting in the game or whatever and say, yo, I wanna do a tune or whatever, blah blah blah. Mm. And I work with them. But I know they might not even have, they're so early, they might not even have management, yeah. let alone lawyers to deal with major label contracts. So I'm always the one like, yo, just clear it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't need no money, just clear it. Yeah. <laughs> do you know what yeah, I mean? yeah. Just put the song out, just put the song out. And then if they don't put the song out, I just, well, there's, there's even, there's more features on Spotify, bro. Mm. They're just under aliases. Oh, okay. We'll have to unpack that another time. We'll have to unpack that another time. I shouldn't even said that, but they are. I can't even tell hey, you. Hey, look, it's on wax now, you know. Yeah, so, they're, they're yeah, out yeah. There. yeah. Well, yeah, that man. said, man, like to just, um, I guess to finish off, man. Um, I don't know what's what's a piece of advice. Actually, no, no, no. Actually, no. That's I don't like that. I don't like that. Um, what has? What are you most looking forward to um, in the next in the next few months? Um, there's there's a massive weight on my chest because I know I have to make another album. Mm. So I'm I'm looking forward to that weight being removed the day I say the next album's finished. Mm. And I'll be back to feeling like a fucking fairy. Nice, nice. <laughs> wicked, wicked. Well, yeah. look, I'm looking forward to that day. I'm looking forward to what's in between. I'm looking forward to the show, of course. Yeah, yeah. Finally catching cold. you in Melbourne. Yeah. And, and um, like it's an actual show. It's like Promised Land. 
and like support slots, you're condensing an experience to pure entertainment. 100%. Whereas like when you've got your own show, you can really just take your time. Absolutely, absolutely. I've been waiting for, I, the other ones were great, but this is what I've been waiting for. Yeah, yeah, as, yeah. As saying, that's and it. you've been, you've caught shows in London as well, which has been, which has been a dope parallel to kind of even oh, see. Oh man, it's been, it was amazing, man. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. But um, I risk, I risk running further over time than I already have on camera. But, bro, <laughs> blessing to Love finally you, chat with you properly, man. Anytime, man. Thank and, you, And, um, yeah, we'll catch you next time on AU Dollars. I'm Noah the Costa. Remember the name and we, we're the one and only. Koji Kojini with the porn star Martini, the chocolate covered savior with no behavior. Lufa Van Koji, Pablo S. Koji, Sir William Radical, so on and so forth. AUD Dollars. Bang. Where's my calamari? You see it? You see it? <laughs> <laughs>